We spend a lot of time talking about vectors in physics. If you study electrodynamics and quantum mechanics, uh, we deal with three space vectors. Three vectors have magnitude and a direction, just like every other vector. Except they can point in any combination of the major three cardinal directions. That's up and down, left and right, and then into the page and out of the page, which, you know, it's hard to draw. Uh, as you probably already know, you can add vectors. A vector plus B vector equals C vector. And what this means is you start with an A vector somewhere. Then you align the B vector, thusly. And the C vector runs from the beginning of the A vector to the end of the B vector. We can also multiply vectors by C, uh, some real number C. We call it a scalar. So C A is going to e equal some new vector B. So let's say we had an A vector pointing this way. If C is greater than 1, then C A vector will stretch it out. If it's less than 1 but greater than 0, then C A vector will shrink it. And if it's negative 1, then it'll flip the vector to point backwards with the same magnitude. That's what multiplying by A scalar does to a vector. Of course, if you multiply by 0, you'll get the 0 vector, which we just write as 0. And the 0 vector has no magnitude and the direction is irrelevant. You can, of course, multiply two vectors with each other. There's two ways to do this. One is called the dot product. A vector dot B vector is going to equal the scalar C. And A vector cross B vector is going to equal another vector, C vector. The magnitude of the dot product is simply A, B, cosine theta where a is the magnitude of the a vector, b is the magnitude of the b vector, and theta is the angle between the two vectors. You'll note that when you double a, the, the dot product also doubles. If you have a, then the dot product also halves. And if you change the angle and adjust it, you'll note that when the two vectors are parallel, the dot product is maximized. However, when the two vectors are perpendicular, the dot product is zero. Let's take a look at the cross product. So the magnitude of the cross product is a, b, sine theta, and it's pointing in the n hat direction. n is a normal vector that is perpendicular to both a vector and b vector. I put a hat on top because its magnitude is one. All hat vectors are length one. You'll also note that a cross b doubles if you double one of the vectors, or halves if you have one of the vectors. And also the angle theta used by sine means that when they're perpendicular, they're maximized, and when they're parallel, it's zero. In order to calculate the direction of n, you need to use your right hand. First, take the hand and align it in the direction of the a vector. Then curl your fingers towards the b vector, wherever that is. With your thumb outstretched, that should give you the direction of the n hat vector. Some people like to use their fingers. You point your index finger in the direction of A, and then you align your middle finger in the direction of B, and the thumb will point in the direction of C. A lot of ink has been spilled, and a lot of breath has been wasted talking about the physical interpretation of the dot and cross products. I don't think of things that way. When I see A cross B or A dot B, what I do is I separate the two vectors into their normal and parallel components. So in this case, the B vector has a perpendicular component pointing that way, and a parallel component pointing out to this far. So it's going to match out to be parallel and perpendicular. Okay, And with this, I don't have to worry about the angle theta anymore. A dot B is really A dot the parallel component of B. And A cross B is going to be A cross the perpendicular component of B. In this sense, the dot product tells me how parallel the two vectors are. And the cross product tells me how perpendicular they are. Now is a great time to mention that I'm supporting this channel by myself right now. If you'd like to help me, you can subscribe to Patreon and donate a few dollars a month to me, or you can join me on Discord and discuss the topics of the day, as well as these videos, of course. Let's talk about some of the properties of the dot and cross products. Note that the dot product is commutative. This means, or commutative, depending on how you pronounce that. This means you can reverse the order of the two vectors and the answer doesn't change. However, the cross product is anti-commutative. If you reverse the order, I did this again. If you reverse the order, then the, the direction of the vector is reversed. This makes a lot of sense. If A cross B is C, 
then B cross A is pointing in the opposite direction. Both the dot product and cross product distribute across sums. A dot, the sum of B plus C vectors, is equal to A vector dot B vector plus A vector dot C vector. And A vector cross B cross B plus C is equal to A cross B plus A cross C. Also, if you multiply one of the vectors by a real number, the dot and cross products will also increase by that number. If you take the dot or cross product of the zero vector, you get zero. If you take the dot or cross product with itself, you end up with this curious result. The dot product with itself is the magnitude squared. We often use this to determine the length of A. We say the square root of A vector dot A vector is equal to A. A vector cross itself is always going to be zero. The reason is because Parallel vectors are zero when you take the cross product. I will only mention the th triple products here. I'll put them up here or something. These deserve their own discussion. They're kind of special and we will, they will come up when we do advanced mathematics with vector vectors. Finally, let me mention how to calculate the products. I mentioned this lastly because in reality we don't spend a lot of time calculating the dot and cross products. We break the vectors down into their, their parallel and perpendicular components and greatly simplify these problems. If you are a mathematicist, then you can calculate the products as follows. First, break the vectors down into their component form. So the A vector has an X component pointing in the same direction as the I hat vector, a Y component pointing in the same direction as a j vector, and a z component pointing the form dire same direction as a k vector. Same for b. b vector is equal to bxi hat plus byj hat plus bzk hat. If we take the dot product, we would multiply each of these terms by each of those terms. Notice that a i dot i is 1, while i dot any other of the base vectors is 0. So the result is ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz. The cross product is a little more involved, but if you work it out, you'll find it's the same as a determinant of the following matrix, i hat, j hat, k hat, ax, ay, az, bx, by, bz. We can write this out in the following form. a, y, b, z minus a z b y i hat plus a z b x minus a x b z j hat plus a x b y minus a y b x k hat. Thanks for your time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video with other people, and you can find me on Patreon or on my Discord server in the description below. Take care. Bye-bye.